Welcome everyone to another Thinkorswim tutorial video. Today I wanted to briefly cover how we can chart options and even option spreads like verticals and iron condors within our charts on this platform. So beginning first with a single leg option. So let's say we wanted to buy a call option on Apple and we wanted to chart that option right here in front of us. We'll go ahead and begin by heading up to the trade tab or anywhere where we can see the option chain down here below. We're then going to find the option contract that we want to copy. And in this case, I've already got the 17th of January open. So let's just go ahead and use this expiration. And looking down here, let's say I was looking at the 260 calls currently going for 256 by 264. All I'm going to do is go ahead and right click on that option. And then within this little menu down here, I'm going to come down below and copy the option symbol. And technically, I didn't actually have to come here to copy it. But if you look here, the symbol is kind of crazy. It starts with a period, gives you the same symbol as the actual stock itself. Then we can see the year, the month, the day, whether or not it's a call or put, and then the strike price. So technically, if you wanted to, you could write all of this out yourself, but it's a whole lot easier just to come here and then copy it by simply clicking on it. And now that we've copied that, if we go back to our charts up here at the top, and I actually want to first come down here and unlink this because I don't want everything changing to this option contract. And now if I come up here above and I just click in that box and delete what's in there and then hit control V on my keyboard, because remember, that's how we paste things. I can then come down below and either click on the contract that's right here or just hit enter on the keyboard. And now looking here at the chart again, this is still a one year, one day chart. So we're looking back one full year in time. And each one of these green and red candles that we see on the chart is the actual full day of activity. But now instead of looking at what Apple did that day, we're now looking at what the Apple 260 calls did. And we could always come up here and change the time frame. Let's say I wanted to go back to a one minute chart. Or if I wanted to go to a five minute or a 15 minute chart, it's going to look exactly the same as any other chart. We even have the same indicators on here. The only difference is this theoretical price that a lot of people don't want to see on here. So if you want to get rid of this, come on up here to the gear icon in the upper right hand corner. And then if we come down below to our option settings, so right here, we'll click on options. We'll then come down here and uncheck show Theo price. And that way that indicator or that study isn't going to appear every time we pull up an option chart. So now with that set, if we come back down here below and hit okay, now we've just got a nice blank chart for our 260 call. And if we instead wanted to look at the Microsoft puts, let's say, we'll come back up here to the, let's say the trade page. We'll go ahead and throw in MSFT for Microsoft. And for this one, let's instead say I'm looking at the weekly at the money puts. So in this case, I opened up three January and I'm looking at the 430 puts going for 320 by 355. Just like before, I'm just going to right click on either of those prices right there. Then I can find down here the symbol for that option contract, and I'm going to go ahead and copy it. I'm then going to head back over to the charts and just paste that symbol in there again. Somehow I pasted in the wrong symbol. And now we got the 430 puts, and it does tell me up here at the top. I'm not sure if I mentioned that before, but right here it tells me I'm looking at the 430 puts. And if I wanted to go back to the full yearly view, you can see these ones have not existed for very long. And that makes sense because these are just weekly options. So they only exist for like seven weeks max. But now we can actually chart that option and see how it's done over time. Now, for those of you who might want to do this a little bit quicker, if you've got a set contract that you're going to be trading all day, like let's say you're going to be trading the at the money spy calls, you're going to be trading the at the money Netflix calls, the Google puts, whatever it might be. What we could do is actually copy all of those option symbols and put them in our watch list over here on the left. Now, for this example, I'm going to make a brand new watch list. So I'm going to come up here to my current watch list, go ahead and click on the name. I'm then going to come up above and create a brand new one. And for this one, I'm just going to call it something simple. I'm going to put options symbols in here for now, and I'm not going to put any symbols in here quite yet. So we'll just come down below and hit save. And now what I need to do is actually find the options that I want to put in there. So if we come back up here to our trade page or anywhere where we can see the option chain, let's say we wanted to put the 435 calls from Microsoft for this week in there. So 
go ahead and copy that. I'm going to then come over to my watch list, just click in the symbol box. But instead of typing in the symbol, we'll of course just hit control V to paste that symbol and then hit enter to save it. Now it is a little squish. So if I give it a little bit more space right here, I can actually read it. And this is definitely going to take a little bit of practice to get the hang of, to see what this is actually telling you. Because remember what it's saying is, of course, this is Microsoft. It expires in 2025. It's for January the 3rd. It's a call option and it's the 435 strike. But that is going to take a minute to get used to this weird formatting to figure out how to actually read this. But if we wanted to throw a few more of them in there, let's say we wanted to put the spy puts in here. And looking over here, let's say we wanted to do the 595 puts. So we'll go ahead and copy that one, come back over my watch list and paste that in there. And let's just do one more. We'll put in there the Netflix calls. And for this one, I'm going to go out a little bit further. We're going to go to 17 January. And then coming down here, just picking randomly, let's put the, uh, the 910 calls. So we'll go ahead and copy that, put in the symbol here. And now with those option symbols in there, if we go back to our charts and we relink this, so we're linking it to red, the same symbol I've got over here on my watch list. And that way, if I want to quickly flip to one of these, like let's say I want to go to the 435 calls on Microsoft, I just click on it. And now I've got the Microsoft option chart over here on the right. If I want to go to Netflix, I could always click on that. Now I've got the 910 calls. We want to trade the puts on SPY. Now we've got the 595 puts pulled up. And I'll also mention when we've got the option chart pulled up, if you come over here to the right and open up the active trader, this little tool right here is now for this specific option contract. So if I were to hit buy market, I'm going to be buying one of the 595 puts on the S&P. If I hit sell market, I'm shorting one of these contracts. If I come down below and use the ladder to place a price at a very specific target I want to buy it at, this would be placing a limit order at 346. But that'll be the basics of how we can chart single leg options within Thinkorswim. But let me take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is actually me. Over the past year, I built a trading journal called Trader Log, which was designed specifically for options traders. You can either upload your brokerage statements directly, and then those statements are automatically organized by spread type, or you can manually add the trades individually if you decide to. You can then quickly track your portfolio performance, analyze your returns by strategy, and in the end, hopefully make more informed trades moving forward. Also, it's not just for options. You can also use it to journal your stock, futures, Forex, and crypto trades. So go ahead and check it out using the link below and use the code TRADERLOG50 for 50% off. Now moving on to charting spreads, I will admit this is incredibly annoying and I really hope they make this process a little bit easier in the future, but I doubt many of you are going to do this very often. Now in order to do this, I actually need to pull up a scratch pad. So I'm going to come down here to my little chart in the lower left and I'm actually going to switch what this does. So right here, I'm going to change it over to the scratch pad. And that way I can put the option symbols in here that I need to use. Just like before, I'm going to come up to the top and I'm actually going to unlink this. And for this example, let's say we wanted to chart out a spread on the S&P. For this one, let's say we were looking at the 595 by 590. And if we were to actually build this out really quick, let's say selling the 595, buying the 590, I can do it right now for a credit of $1.62. But if I wanted to see how that might have traded over time, what we're going to need to do is actually copy both of these option symbols. So I'm going to begin with the 595 put. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on it. I'm going to copy it. I'm then going to come over here to my scratch pad on the left. Go ahead and paste that in there. Remember, just control V. And it's in this really dark blue text right now, but I'll go ahead and change that in a second to make it easier. But before we do that, I actually want to type in the minus sign right here. And it's really hard to see. Actually, let me just change the color now so you can actually read it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this option minus the price of the other option. So now we need to go over and copy the option symbol for the 590 put. And then once that's copied, we'll come back over here to the scratch pad. And again, we'll paste it in there by hitting control V. Let me go ahead and change that color so you guys can actually see it. 
And now looking right here, we've got the 595 put minus the 590 put. It looks like there's a little space in there. And what I need to do is now copy this entire thing. So we're gonna go ahead and hit Control C to copy it. Then we're gonna head back over to the charts page and I'm gonna paste that entire symbol up here in the upper left-hand corner. It's right there, we're gonna go ahead and paste it in. And now looking up here at the top, it tells us, hey, this is the 595 put minus the cost of the 590 put. And we can see here it is trading for $1.61 currently. And if we look at the chart over time, we can see how it's done since it looks like this is June 28th. But you can see that process was insanely painful. In order to do that, we have to copy each symbol and then we have to either put plus or minus if we're adding them together or subtracting them. Then we've got to take that symbol, paste it in the box up here, and then we can see the actual price of the spread over time down here below. And unless there's a method that I haven't been able to figure out, this is the only way to do it within here. And because of that, it's going to be incredibly painful, even more painful to create things like butterfly spreads when you've got multiple legs and multiple different quantities at certain strike prices. This is only going to be something that you want to do pretty rarely because, again, it's a little bit painful to do. But if you want to see a chart of a spread over time, this is how we can do it. Now, going through another example, if we wanted to chart, let's say, a long straddle on Netflix, or actually, let's try and do Apple, maybe something a little more liquid. Let's go ahead and come back up here to the trade page. We'll go ahead and flip this over from the S&P over to Apple. And for this example, let's say we wanted to chart out the 255 straddle. So buying the 255 call, buying the 255 put, and seeing how it did over time. So let's go ahead and start by copying the 255 call. Go ahead and delete whatever's in here currently. We'll then come over and right click on the 255 put next. So we'll go ahead and copy that one as well. And now coming back down to the scratch pad, instead of saying minus this time, I actually want to add these two options together. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus sign if I can figure it out on my keyboard. I'm then going to paste the other option symbol in here. And just so you guys can see it, I'll go ahead and again change this to a color that's actually visible here. And now we can see what we're doing. We're adding the 255 call to the 255 put. And again, we'll copy that whole symbol, go back over to the charts page, and then paste that huge symbol into the search box. And now looking here at the straddle that we just built out, we can see it's currently going for 886. And looking back in time, we can see that that traded significantly higher than it is now. I mean, look at this. At one point, it was all the way up here in the 80s. And now it's lost over 90% of its value over that time. So hopefully none of you out there ever bought this straddle. Hopefully you guys sold it, if anything. But that's how you're going to chart options and option spreads within here. Technically, there's some other ways that I don't feel are any more helpful than this one. But hopefully that helps. And if you do feel like learning anything else in here, go ahead and check out this next video to learn some more helpful tools in Thinkorswim. And I'll see you all there.